everyone and welcome back to another video. So today we're going to be solving the lead code question, coin piles, and this is part of the CSES problem set. Alright, so this is a really interesting question and in this question you have two coin piles containing A and B coins and on each move you can either remove one coin from the left pile and uh, remove two coins from the right pile or you could remove two coins from the left pile and one coin from the right pile, okay? Now the goal over here is to efficiently find out if you can empty out both of the piles. Now in this case, we're gonna first have a integer value t as our input, and then we're gonna get t lines of inputs with two integers a and b, telling us the number of coins in each of the piles. Now if we can actually empty out both of the piles using these rules that were defined up above over here, then in that case we print yes. And if we cannot, we're gonna return, or sorry, we're gonna print out no. So let's see how we can actually do this. All right, so let's just first look at our most basic case. So let's say we have A and B piles, and let's say we have two coins in A. Now let's say we have four coins in B. So in this case, whenever you have two times the amount of uh, coins than the other pile, that is the most basic or the simplest solution, right? So what would happen is you remove one from A, and then two from B. Remove another from A, and then two from B. So this way, you get the pile down to zero. But one thing to notice in this case, so this is always going to work when uh, one pile has exactly two times the amount of coins than the other. But now let's just say we have one more, okay? So the two times two is four, but in this case, we have five coins. So in this case, no matter what you do, right? So remove one and get rid of two here. Remove one, get rid of two more. You are going to have extra coins. And that means that we are not able to empty our pile. So this is one of our conditions. So whenever one of the piles has two times more coins than the other pile, right? Then in that case, that means we're never going to have a, a okay, we're never going to be able to empty both of the piles. So in that case, we're going to print out no. Okay, so this is one of the conditions that we need to keep in mind. So now let's look at what the other conditions would look like. Okay, so let's just actually continue with the same example. And what we're going to do is we're going to kind of write this in a form of an equation. Okay. So there's two types of moves that we could have, two possibilities, right? So we can remove one from A, okay? Uh, and we could remove two from B, or we can remove two from A and remove one from B. Oh, sorry, remove one from B, okay? So let's call this case over here X, and let's call this case over here Y, okay? So what is the value of A going to be, okay? So the number of points removed from A in simple words, using this equation, okay, so when it's x, we remove one coin, and when we do y moves, it's two coins. So a is nothing else but x plus 2y. The same way b is nothing else but 2x, because we remove one x here, so one coin from a, and two coins from b. So the same way, 2x plus 1y, right? We remove two coins from y here, and one from uh, y in, when we're at b. Okay, so this is the equation that we have. So now let's actually try to combine both of these, okay? So when you combine this, you get a plus b, and then x plus 2x is 3x plus 3y. So we can simplify this further more, and this is just going to be a plus b is equal to 3 into x plus y. Now remember, x plus y is going to be the two types of moves we have, and a plus b in this case is the total number of coins that we have. So this actually gives us the solution that we're looking for. So Let's actually simplify this. Now remember, x plus y is the total number of possibilities we have. So in this case, if you do a plus b divided by 3, it has to be equal to x plus y. Okay, so this is when it is working. So this means that in this case, we are able to empty out all of the coins. So when a plus b, so the total number of coins, divided by 3 has some positive value, there is a way to empty out all the coins. So that's going to be equal to x plus y. So the way we know whether this works or not is if a plus b is actually divisible by 3. If it's not divisible by 3, this is not going to make any sense. So the condition for this is a plus b mod 3 has to be equal to 0. So when this condition is true, that means that we will be able to remove the coins so that there's no coins left in the pile. So this is the logic to it. Hopefully you did get it, and now let's see what this looks like in code. 
Okay, so in this case, we're first going to get t, and we're going to first get the value of t. Now we're going to iterate through all of its values, okay? So we get the value of a, and then we get the value of b. So now that we have these two values, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to ensure that a is always good, the biggest value. So it's just kind of easier, okay? So if b is greater than a, we're going to swap it, and in that way, a always has the largest value. Now, in this case, the first thing we do is we check if a, because we know a is greater, is greater than 2 times b. Now, if a is greater than 2 times b, remember, we will never have a solution, right? So the largest value is when a is equal to 2 times b. But if it's anything greater, like in this condition, that means we do not have an answer. And then in that case, we're going to print out no, okay? Uh, so that's one condition where we do not have an answer. And the other is when you add the total number of coins, which is a plus b, and you do mod 3, and it's not equal to 0. So when the total number of coins is not divisible by 0, like we sh like I showed you in the equation earlier, that also means that we do not have a actual proper solution. So then we also print out the value no. But if neither of these is true, that means that we can empty out both of the piles using these two conditions. And in that case, we're going to uh, print out yes. So let's actually just look at an example. Okay, so let's say we have a total of three values and let's first give it two and one. So this is, so that, that is correct. Uh, now let's give it another extreme. So let's say nine and 18. This should also work. And now let's give it something that won't work. So let's say three and uh, four. So that doesn't work. So as you can see, it is working. And when I submit this, it does work uh, in the CSES problem set. So yeah, thanks a lot for watching guys and do let me know if you have any questions.